Hello and welcome back to the second video tutorial in our 10 part video tutorial series on creating an e-commerce site using Drupal and Ubercart. I am Peter Orsi, the Toronto website developer specializing in Drupal. And this video tutorial series is brought to you in collaboration with myself as well as the Ubercart.org guys. Uh, they contacted me a while ago and said, Pete, you know, we should really get something out there to help out these users, uh, no charge, get them set up with Drupal and Ubercart. So that's what we're doing. Um, in the previous video tutorial, we went ahead and we installed Drupal, we, uh, we created our database, we created our database user, and we uploaded Drupal via FTP and installed it on our site. And this is what we got out of that. In the previous video tutorial, I know I said we were going to jump right into modules and installing those, but uh, we're going to take a step back and just look at Drupal itself um, and some of the common terminology, like what are modules, what are themes, nodes, blocks, just so that you have a basic understanding. If you're on the forums and you need help on Drupal.org or Ubercart.org, uh, you can speak the Drupal language and understand what people are talking about when they're when they're kind of talking to you. We're not going to go overly in depth. This will probably be a, a, a ten minute video tutorial and give you a basic understanding. Uh, there's lots of resources out there if you want to go further than that. Um, Drupal.org's documentation is a great place to start. Uh, there's another book, uh, Pro Drupal Development Seven, which highly recommend. Uh, I read it every couple months just to refresh myself. Uh, perfect book for for learning Drupal and the intricacies of kind of what's going on if you want to dive deep. With that said, let's get into it. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about is modules. In the previous video tutorial, I told you that Drupal is kind of like your operating system for your website. You install it, you get some core functionality, but if you want to add on new things like e-commerce, uh, that's where you go and you get a module and you install that module and it'll bring in new functionality. So in terms of that system, what Drupal actually does is it's code, but it has what are called hooks. So as Drupal code is executing, it will create these hooks, and those hooks are kind of like opportunities for other modules to kind of step into Drupal and do different things. So when a user registers, there will be a hook that's fired. And so as the registration process is happening, you have this hook and modules can step into that to say, if you don't want a user going to a specific page, you can redirect them to something out. Um, if they're logging in and they happen to be a premium website user of yours, uh, you can check that and say, okay, they're premium, so I don't want them to see my sales page because they've already done that, so we'll send them over to uh, the premium login page. Um, those are the types of things that you can do. Uh, Ubercart.org, uh, it will step in in, uh, in a variety of different places. So it will actually use hook menu, right? So it will create different paths on Drupal. So uh, hook menu will allow you to uh, register different URLs so that those URLs exist. So slash cart exists when a user wants to check out what's in their shopping cart. Um, we're going to be diving in deep into modules when we uh, when we're installing those, and so you'll see the different functionality that we can get, and we can touch on some of those different hooks, uh, especially in the comments. If you have questions and you're understanding, when curious about what hooks are being fired, check out the ubercart.org code um, or any other code because it's all open source, right? You can download it and check it out when you install it. So modules themselves, um, again, based on hooks different functionality that you can install. There's all kinds of modules. If you actually check out drupal.org, and if we go to download and extend, you'll see down here we have the module categories, but you can check out the most installed and get an idea of kind of what people are using. So views by far the most uh, used. We're gonna be installing that as well. I won't get too far into it, but what this allows you to do is kind of provides a graphical user interface to creating database queries. So remember all of our data is stored in the database we can then pull specific information out using this graphical user interface. Views is hugely powerful and by far every website that I install always on it. I think that's true of most Drupal installations. I can't see how you wouldn't use views. Um, token, chaos tools, you can read about these uh, if you're interested. Uh, so those are modules, kind of add-on functionality, give you a, a brief overview. Um, the, the one thing you might want to know, um, to install a module, all you really need is two basic files, a .info file and a .module file. Uh, just taking a brief look at that, some do get a little bit more intricate. So Ubercart, by far, uh, uh, you know, some of the functionality is pretty pretty crazy there. So they have a bunch more files. But here's a good example. So Image API module actually comes with three different modules within it. We see we have an in info file and we have a module file. They also create an install file. And what this typically will do is will install things to your database when the actual module is enabled. So that happens just on the install. Um, and then there will be uh, usually files within that, or sorry, um, function calls within that, that will run uh, different functions when you uninstall that. So they'll remove that database from your, or remove that info from your database. But again, image uh, API underscore GD, right? That's another module. So you have an install, an info, 
and a module file. So that's that's just a brief intro into kind of what those are. But again, if you're interested in that, Pro Drupal Development 7 is a great book, or look at drupal.org, uh, the user documentation. In terms of themes, this is you'll hear a lot about themes when you're when you're working with Drupal. And what themes are, they control the look and feel of your website. So um, here's a good example. Uh, this our website, when we installed it, had the Bartik theme uh, that comes with Drupal, default theme that's installed. Uh, another theme that comes with Drupal is Garland. So I went ahead and, and I enabled Garland, and you can get a look at, uh, a good understanding of kind of what we mean by theme by checking out the difference between these two um, websites, essentially. They're, they're both uc.torontowebsitedeveloper.com. I haven't changed any of the content, but you can see how it's laid out differently. Uh, you know, our logo is a little bit more to the left. We have our uh, Ubercart tutorial series in a different font. Right, um, our blocks here, blocks, which uh, another thing we'll be touching upon, they look a little bit different. Uh, you'll see kind of the background, the CSS, cascading style sheets, uh, obviously provide different, uh, different formatting for that. But our content, all the text is the exact same, right? So it is possible for the theme to change that. This theme obviously isn't changing that, but the theme. Essentially, you hear about this different theme layer that Drupal has. So you have your modules that provide your functionality and actually provide your content. So that's where you create your content. And then when that's going to be output to a user, it's passed through a theme system, right? So that theme system has the ability to change the look and feel of different things. So modules will provide, you know, your basic information. So a module might, uh, comments is a good example. It'll say, you know, posted by username and then in this ugly date. The theme system can then go in, check that out and say, okay, I'm going to look at that comment posted by, and I'm going to change it to say, uh, username posted a comment on Monday, January 3rd. So a little bit nicer, uses all the same data, but it will change the look and feel of that. So two different things to think about there when you're looking at a theme, there's the look and feel, but then themes also have the ability to kind of change some of your content, right? So it still exists in the original form, but themes change it as users go to see it. So I know that's a little bit complicated. It's a very, you know, thousand foot level view of themes. And if you're interested, again, we're just gonna be scratching the surface here, but if you're interested, go to drupal.org, check out the user documentation, uh, or read up on, on some of this stuff. You can really get in depth. Theme layer is what makes Drupal so powerful uh, because you really have finite control over what your users are seeing. All modules should be passing their information to the theme layer before it's actually output. So they'll be doing that through theme function calls. And again, you can read all about that. But for now, what you just need to know is we're gonna be using the Bartik theme for our video tutorial series. Everyone has access to it, so it just makes sense to be doing that. Um, and we're not gonna to get too in depth to the theme layer changing themes around, but we might touch upon it in the advanced settings. Uh, or if there are specific questions, we can always do a follow-up tutorial. Uh, and again, you can post comments on drupal.org or torontowebsitedeveloper.com uh, with those. So those are themes. Next is nodes. So this is, this is something that kind of took me a while to wrap my head around. Nodes refer to your pieces of content on your website. So a lot of times if you're brand new to Drupal, you're brand new to the kind of dynamic web development, you think of uh, each piece of your content as a page. So, you know, we have TorontoWebsiteDeveloper.com as its own page. Uh, if I create an About Us page, uh, we'd think of that as our page. In Drupal, what those are actually are nodes. So the nodes refer to specific content. So as we go to add content here, we'd be adding a node. And Drupal has a node system whereby it's got a specific table that identifies, okay, here's a node unique ID, here's the node's title, here's who it's created by, and a bunch of information associated with that. And then it actually takes the, the information, the body, the title, uh, or sorry, the body, any other fields that we add, and it associates that information with those nodes via the unique ID. I know that's a bit complicated, this thousand foot level. Uh, again, we don't wanna to get too in depth, but just want you to have an understanding of what a node is. It's your actual piece of content. Um, so that, you know, if you create a page and it has a title, it has a body, that's your node, right? So that's node one type thing. So this welcome to Ubercart tutorial series. Um, front page, and I mean, this is a little bit deceptive. If you're familiar with Drupal, you know I'm gonna be talking, this is gonna be wrong, but this is our, our first node, right? That's the way to think about it. Um, and, you know, if we add an About Us page, that would be our second node, right? In fact, the front page right now, the way that it's set up, isn't actually a node. It just pulls in all the content that we have that are published to the front page. But again, don't worry about that. Um, so that's, that's nodes. 
Have any questions? Again, I know we're, we're breezing through this. Post a question on torontowestsidedeveloper.com or ubercard.org and we'll be more than happy to kind of get into that. Uh, pretty complicated, but there's lots of discussion on drupal.org about nodes. Last thing we're going to talk about is blocks. Blocks are kind of unique. Um, they're not actually nodes. What they are are um, different, I want to say, pieces of content, for lack of a better term, that you can place kind of throughout your site. So when you install a theme, a theme's going to come with uh, what are called regions, right? So uh, we'll actually, we'll take a look at this um, just quickly. And if you go to the blocks page, a good example of here is demonstrate block regions for, for Bartik. And you'll see here, we've got a header region, we've got a featured region, sidebar, highlighted sidebar, help, content, right? And so these are all places that you can place these blocks throughout your site. Um, and what blocks are, they, they provide a variety of functions. Um, you know, one of your blocks uh, right here, powered by Drupal, that might be a block. Uh, your menus can provide blocks. So you can put your menus on the side here. The search is, is a block, right? So modules are able to create blocks um, for different functionality. You know, you might have your 10 most popular posts as a block. Um, but what you can also create your own blocks as well. If you wanted to have a block that was just static text on the left that just said, you know, Hey, I'm Peter Jaworski, I'm the Toronto website developer, and I've been using Drupal for a few years now, only to develop websites using Drupal, and I wanted to have that on every page across my site. I could do that as a block, and I could leave it there. Um, blocks are pretty versatile. You can create them only so that uh, you know anonymous users can see them, only registered users can see them. Uh, they can be placed anywhere here, and they can also be dynamic. They can create database calls, so uh, every time a block loads, it wants to see the 10 most recent posts. Uh, you can write some PHP in there, uh, you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend you write it in the block itself, but it is possible. And it can pull out um, those 10 posts. The reason why I say we don't write it in the block is because you kind of want to keep your code separate from your actual database. kind of gets ugly if you're, if you're doing that on a large scale. Um, but again, kind of diving in too deep than we need to get to uh, there. Um, I'll just give you a, kind of a brief example. Let's throw some, some crazy blocks across our site here, and you can get an idea of what we're doing here. So... Um, I don't know if these are actually going to show up because we don't have any of this. So main menu, let's put that there. And let's go ahead and save blocks and we'll see what our site looks like now. As you can probably guess, I'm doing this on the fly. So here we go. So we threw our menu down in the bottom right region, right? Powered by Drupal's in our bottom footer. This is a new block, who's online. We kind of posted it right up top there. And so it gives you a good idea of kind of all these different blocks. We can go and we can edit these right away. So we go to configure block. And again, we're getting way down in the weeds here, but just wanted to give you an idea. And here's kind of the setup for these blocks. So this is what I was talking about. Only, you know, specific roles can see it. Uh, only users, uh, specific pages, only on pages, right? We can show a specific block. So that's good if, you know, you're on the checkout page of Uber. Uh, of, of our Ubercart um, checkout page. And we want to say, you know, users who bought stuff that you bought also bought this. Uh, we can do that with a specific block on the checkout page. Um, but again, uh, we'll be looking at that when we when we get uh, further into our video tutorial series. So that's kind of like the thousand foot level. I know we went super fast. Um, didn't want to get too down in the weeds. Didn't want to bog you down because I know the purpose of this is just to get your e-commerce site out there. So if you're looking to learn more about Drupal, post a question. Uh, we'll more than help you to help out. But also check out the Drupal.org user documentation as well as the forums. Uh, you'd be surprised how many questions have already been answered in the forums. Um, and a uh, wealth of information there for you to check out. So next video tutorial, we'll be adding modules where we'll be looking at downloading views, admin module, Ubercart, uh, getting those up and running on our site uh, and taking our site to the next level. So I uh, hope this helped out. I uh, hope this was new information for you and uh, we'll see you in the next video tutorial series. Thanks for video tutorial in this series. Thanks for watching.